in that sequence that day, and I heard about the mask. I actually saw the whole creation sitting there in the, the special effects trailer, and I was I always wanted to play with everything, and they said they just said, can't touch that Oliver. You know, we're going to need that soon. <laughs> so then I heard, okay, I, they're actually going to be shooting this. So yeah, it was. I remember it was like a, the stage was dark. I creeped onto the set. It was like such a movie magic moment. And so okay, and I also heard that they had to get it in one shot. One shot yep. And then I also heard Stephen was going to be doing it. I'm like, what? How is he going to do this? And exactly as Marty said, he was like below this you know mask this face and it was his hands and he did it all in one shot and he just and it's amazing to watch those are steven's hands tearing apart the mask and i was just blood was going everywhere and dripping and i was just this is so cool and fantastic especially someone 10 years old who loves that kind of thing what 10 year old wouldn't love that yeah. you know so um we they got it in one shot he, the fate it was over so fast too i just remember it was one moment the mask was there it was a, a really. It looked exactly like you, yeah. and and moment it was just torn apart, and blood was everywhere. I remember blood got all over Stephen, his entire body, and pull off his shirt and clean up, and everyone was really happy. And I was like, wow, that that is filmmaking right there, you know. And it was really inspirational. As a kid, dealing with elements like that, you know, with the blood and things, and it's not a particularly gory film per se, but it does have a lot of sort of, uh, I guess you could say, adult themes with some of the. Did you have any issue? With that, or to you, was it just like being a kid in a candy store and you knew it was all effects and you were just excited about the process? Or was there any part of you that's like, oh God, that's kind of gross or anything? Um, I think, you know, basically making a movie is a very slow, long process. And I was basically on set for almost three and a half, four months. And you really don't know how the film's going to be assembled because they shoot the film entirely out of order. All the special effects are laid in afterwards. And like Marty was saying, we really didn't know what we were looking at at all. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you'd have, you know, they'd be hanging, put crosses and stars be in front of us, and we'd always ask, what are we, what are we looking at, or what are we afraid of? And like they told Marty, on the stairs, on we the had stairs, no idea what those people on the stairs were going to look like at all. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and you're you're wondering this is just, and I remember saying, what am I getting, what am I screaming at here? And they'd say. They, and Toby would say, the scariest thing you can ever imagine. So I just tried to imagine that it happened to my childhood fears. And just getting back to your question about you know the, youth, the adult you know themes in it. Uh, for, as a kid, I really wasn't thinking about that. I was just Robbie Freeling. I was the kid in the family, and I was just living in those moments too. And I'd actually, whether you believe it or not, I believed I lived at that time in a, in a haunted house. I, I grew up in New York City up until the age of eight. And I swear this townhouse we lived in in Manhattan, which was built in the 1870s, was haunted. So that's what I thought about. I thought about you know the feeling of someone walking up the stairs when you're all alone in your bed in this big old Victorian creepy place. Yeah. And that's what I really tapped into. So that's what I was really thinking about. And I think just the themes in that film which make it long lasting, and that separated from a lot of movies being made today and probably in the future as well, is that it really is grounded with the, you know, the relation between the family and how much they care about each other and the love for each other. Because that makes those special effects scenes even that much more powerful because you care about this family and they're like a true family that when things happen to them and you have those visceral moments, it's not just about the blood and the guts and everything else like that. You're, you identify with them and that's what makes that film powerful, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what, can I just add to yeah, that? Absolutely. One of the things that was really interesting over the last two days, meeting people, we, we met a lot of moms who, this was a movie that they took their kids to see. And that was always kind of surprising to me, but we had so many guys and, and women come up and say, oh, this is, my mom took me to see this when I was five or six. And I was always kind of shocked by that. But then at the same time, I thought about it. We were talking about this yesterday, because what it's a movie, it's a movie about a mom who basically goes to hell to get her daughter back from these creatures, this beast that has taken her daughter. And it's, it's, it's one of the few movies I think I've ever seen where a mom is the hero. The mom's the one who goes to extreme lengths to save her child. Yeah. And it was fascinating to see that connection with so many of the women that came up they, with their either teenage kids or, or grown kids who said, oh yeah, I, I sat in the theater and she wanted me to see this movie. So that, that never occurred to me until sitting at the convention this weekend. Yeah.